Hi, I'm Mark Weitzman. Welcome back to the uh, tenth video in my playlist on um, textbooks and other books that I recommend for physicists that I tend to own. And um, so, in this video, we're going to cover um, more quantum mechanics books with applications to quantum computing and quantum information and then go on into uh, computational physics and then just discuss um, maple and latex very briefly and um, so let me start with um, the book by Asher Perez this is a um, book that was published in 1995 and uh, it was recommended I found out about this book John Preskill recommended this book he studied it after he switched from um, particle physics and high energy physics to uh, quantum computing in the mid 90s and uh, he said that he found this book very useful to educate him on all the sort of modern developments in quantum mechanics these are all well known right now but they're it's just you know things covering Bell's theorems and um, Kopkin Specter uh, theorems and um, crypto determinism, quantum inseparability, contextuality. So all the um, the first part of the book is really Gleason's theorem. The first part of the book is uh, excellent for um, applying to you know quantum computation, quantum information getting a better background on that. The second kind is uh, covers inf interesting stuff, but it's not directly related. Although I guess information and thermodynamics uh, will be uh, part of it, um, and the measuring process. So this is an excellent book to sort of like go beyond the standard uh, quantum mechanics. And um, another book that I recommend that... Um, is on quantum measurement. It was written by some Russians and it was like who worked with uh, Kip Thorne at Caltech and um, he has a forward to the book. It's a very short book but it sort of outlines in detail not the philo philosophical aspects of quantum measurement but just some of the practical aspects. It probably needs to be updated to today but they actually go through some real measurements and how they're done, quantum non -dominant demolition measurements and uh, continuous measurements and um, you know all kinds of things to show like what really applies and what really doesn't apply so it's only about 180 pages but it's very useful and it's not difficult at all um, another book this is more of um, this was published let's see when this was published was about 2010 I'm thinking um, no, 2006. This is sort of like a beginning graduate. Uh, this is a beginning graduate level book, and it's like the idea is to talk about all the um, recent developments from like both the theoretical and experimental point of view. You know about atoms and cavities and photons and how they can measure all these things that we used to not be able to measure it. It's not that equation heavy, though it does go in places and develop the theory, but a lot of it is just words, but it has things like James Cummings model and um, photons in the box and the environment, Lindblad master equation. It has a lot of things that you may not see in a beginning quantum mechanics course, and you see them apply to like quantum optics and um, you know, the idea is to produce these cat states and entanglement states. So, excellent book to read and get a sort of um, a feel for all the recent developments in the last couple of decades. You know, one of the big things when I was studying quantum mechanics in the 80s and everything was all these books talked about, and Feynman did it too in the 60s. They talked about, let's say you have a single electron and so on and so forth, but nobody ever did single atom experiments or single electron experiments. It was always an ensemble of a lot of things. But nowadays, you know, in the last four decades, six decades, we've actually gotten control of nature where we can manipulate single atoms and single photons. And this book sort of shows you how this is done. Um, and all of this is necessary to really have an excellent 
background for quantum computation and quantum information. Um, I left these books out. I should have put this in the earlier um, quantum mechanics books, but I left out Feynman's um, wonderful book on quantum mechanics and path integrals. This was published in 65. It was a McGraw-Hill publication, and it was republished as a Dover book. And um, it's... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a Feynman book, and it's extremely um, interesting and well-written, and shows you how he thought of quantum mechanics. Nowadays, the path in, it sort of introduced the path integral to a generation of physicists. In this book, he only deals with the non-relativistic path integral, for the most part. But he goes through a lot of details, and um, he relates it, in the end, to a lot of things like statistical mechanics and probability. So it's an excellent book by Feynman. Another much later book that was published, I think, in the mid-80s. Oh, this is the... Let me go back. Let me... Uh, I'm sorry. This is the book, Techniques and Applications of Path Integrals by Schulman. It's, um, it's a book that goes beyond Feynman. It was published in 2005 and gives much more of the... Um, justification for it and applications and everything, um, but it's not as rigorous as a lot of other books are. So um, he has a lot. It's about 400 pages. It's well worth reading on um, on the path integral. The Bible of the path integral is a... Used, this book used to be online and available, but I guess it's not anymore. But This is a massive book by Kleinart where he applies the path integral just every area where it can be applied. I think it's about 1,500 pages, and it's pretty advanced. Um, Feynman really loved the path integral and thought it could be applied anywhere, but people would come to him and say, well, how are you going to apply it to the particle in the box? Well, how are you going to apply, apply it to an electron in a hydrogen atom? And it turns out it's very difficult to do it. That's why we have the Schrodinger equation and everything, even though they're equivalent. But Kleinart sort of applied it everywhere, at least he, he got a lot of developments. He worked with Feynman, and he talks about Kerr space-time, and um, he develops quantum mechanics, and then he goes with the path integral. He applies it to all kinds of places, like the hydrogen atom. Starts with the simple ones, the harmonic oscillator, and he just goes into just applying it everywhere. This is like his life's work or something. Um, and then he goes and applies it to finance and um, other physical situations in condensed matter. So, um, and he goes into different coordinates and everything. He really goes into all the ins and outs of the path integral. So if you want to become an expert in path integrals, this is a book that covers a lot of material. But it's not easy, definitely not easy. Um, so it's over it's like 1,500 pages. Um, another book I left out from the quantum um, playlist is a very old book, but really easy book to read, and it was published probably in the mid-60s. It's like a picture book. It was republished in 1992, but anyway, it's fairly cheap, and it's um, a guide to um, Feynman diagrams and the many body things, and it really draws just a lot of pictures throughout the book. Um, you know, it's sort of like equations in, in terms of pictures. But it's an easy read and gets you to understanding how you use um, Feynman diagrams in many body physics. And um, trying to get to some, you know, he's got some equations in the book, but a lot of it is like this. You know, just here's what's happening, here's what's happening, here's what's happening, so on and so forth. Well worth reading, easy to read. Um, another old book that I have was like one of these, um, I think it was like University of Santa Fe or one of these conferences that they have on complexity, entropy, and the physics of information. I'm sorry, this is, a, yeah, St. John's College in Santa Fe, the Santa Fe Institute. This is fantastic reading. It has a bunch of articles and uh, still worthwhile reading today. And they have things like by Jaynes and 
you know, all these other people about, you know, all kinds of things, whether it's Wheeler, you know, physics, entropy of black holes, algorithmic information, church Turing thesis, you know, all these things have advanced and been worked on, but this is like a good place to start if you know nothing about this. Physics of computation, I'll have more to say on this. Um, quantum theory of measurement, everything. So, um, this is a, if you can get a hold of this book or out of a library or anything, while it's a little dated, it's, it's really well worth reading. Um, now, going into uh, quantum computing, Scott Aronson is one of the leading um, complexity theorists in the country, and he wrote a book on quantum computing since, I'll probably mispronounce this, Democritus, and um, it's mostly like a popular book, except it, it's, it's hard to read, actually, because it really covers the material. It just doesn't have much equations in it or mathematics in it. He just He uses words to describe everything about complexity theory and how quantum compu computation develops and so on. So this is from a complexity theorist's point of view and um, it's mostly words and, it, and it's partially popular but partially pretty advanced. So it's, it's, it's kind of like nice reading this book either, you know, just as you're beginning your quantum computing studies, it will give you sort of like in words various lessons. The, um, the first book on quantum computation, that first really serious book that came out and still it came out in 2001, then they came out a 10th anniversary edition which didn't add anything 10 years later, is by uh, Nielsen and Chang. These are um, one of the, Ch Chang is an MIT professor and uh, this book is like the Bible on the subject I'm not saying there haven't been developments in the field since this book to have, but you have to know everything that's in this book at least. So this is sort of like, if you first want to learn about quantum computation and information, start here. And it has a lot of things where it has quantum computation, quantum algorithms. He has a very good start on everything. And then he gets into more details where he does quantum mechanics, again, from a computational uh, uh, point of view. And then computer science he covers. Sorry about that. Um, and, you know, the first, first third of the book is an easy read. The middle third is, like, not too hard. It covers most of the subject. The last third, when, and he goes and covers the algorithms, the last third on quantum information gets a little bit more detailed and a little bit um, harder to read, but it covers the subject very well. Um, now, to me, the best place from a physics physicist's point of view to learn quantum information and quantum computation is John Preskill's notes. And this is his course site. He's got a course and he's got one for 2022 and he's got problem sets and everything on these courses. Some are available, some are not as available as they were. But his lecture notes are really excellent. He has said he will publish it as a book one day. It's one of those things where, like, Thorne and Blanford took 40 years to publish their modern classical physics. I think John Preskill is going to take, like, 40 years to publish this as a book. But the notes are all latex, and they're um, really fantastic. I especially recommend Chapter 4, which is about, like, entanglement and Bell's theorems and Bell equalities and, and all these things. And um, it's written from the point of view of a theoretical physicist. So um, since I'm, these whole, all these lists are written from that point of view, also it fits rather well in. And Preskill is like, you know, one of the top authorities in the country on anything in physics and especially in um, quantum computation and uh, information. So he's got nice stories in here. He, he, everything works, he, he integrates everything very well. And he's continually updating his notes. I don't know if he's passed like a thousand pages of notes, but he's got a lot of them. He's got 10 chapters. As you can see, the chapters are like an introduction Foundation states and ensembles. This chapter two is like all the advanced quantum mechanics stuff that you don't learn in 
a beginning quantum mechanics course, but that you now need for this. Measurement and evolution, entanglement, circuits, algorithms, error correction, topological quantum computation, and Shannon theory. And he's also got a lot of other uh, topics. These are, I guess he's way trying to integrate these into new chapters, and then um, he'll publish it as a book. Um, now, before all this stuff, if you want to go back to like the prehistory of all these stuff, there were a bunch of books published in the 80s. When I was at Caltech, Feynman taught a course on um, potentialities and limitations of computing machines and everything. And this book summarizes that course f fairly well. And, um, but it was, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's obsolete, but it's, um, you know, it's from the 80s. And um, it gives Feynman's viewpoint on a lot of topics in relative to computers. And he talks about, you know, how all the models were developed and everything. And it's not just quantum computation, it's just computers, computers in general. And he covers sort of all the, the basic topics. Um, so if you're interested in the history of the field, if you're interested in maybe getting an idea that, you know, has been lost, this, this is an excellent book to read. And um, there's a companion book, Feynman and Computation. Um, and uh, this book, oh, well, they don't have a, can't really see it inside of it. Um, so this book has papers, I believe, by, Feynman, by other people who worked with Feynman, like Fox, you know, at Caltech, and all these other things, and gives um, more detail. Um, on, on what was going on in the field. Now moving on to computational physics in general, when I was at Caltech, Steve Coonan was a de default graduate advisor. Those who didn't have a graduate advisor yet defaulted to Coonan, and I was one of those, but I never got my PhD. But he was working on, and he gave me the notes to his book on computational physics, and he gave a lecture, um, the Physics Thursday Physics Research um, Conference every Thursday afternoon at Caltech. He gave a lecture where he had two computers hooked up. They were like IBM XTs and ATs or something. And he showed what you could do on, on computers. And everybody was just like amazed and blown away by Kunin's uh, demonstration. So this is a... There's a zillion books nowadays on computational physics, but I still think Kunin's is the best. Why is it the best? Because it's a project-oriented book. He's got like eight long examples and, pro and projects. And so he sort of teaches... The original book was written in BASIC, by the way. BASIC was the only language that was available on all those early IBM computers, personal computers. He published a later edition, which went to Fortran. But... You shouldn't do any of this in either of those languages. All the code is there in the book, and it's available online as well. You should translate the code that's there into the language of your choice. For instance, for, I've done all most of these programs in Python. and uh, But it's what you learn. You learn, like, this is for, like, a third-year undergraduate physics student. You learn all about, like, numerical computations, basic mathematical operations, ordinary differential equations, runs CUDA methods, you know, these are standard. And then he's got the problems, like things like um, the structure of white dwarf stars or order and chaos and two-dimensional motion. Um, he's got all kinds of stuff, hartree fock atomic structure. And he does the physics in the book as well. He assumes you're familiar with the physics, but he does the physics, and, you know, he'll do the whole thing on special functions. Not that important nowadays. They're all programmed into the languages, you know, whether you use Maple or Python or any other thing. But the Born and Iconol approximations, and then he'll do like, in the matrix things, he'll show you how all these linear algebra li li libraries work, because he goes down to, you know, he has you develop all the, and he talks about all the algorithms. And then there's like the shell model, he'll do a hydrodynamics model with elliptic partial differential equations self-organization and chemical reactions. And then he'll has a final chapter on Monte Carlo methods where he does Monte Carlo for the hydrogen molecule and the icing model. So um, 
It's a really excellent book. Most of the books on computational physics are like, they're either geared at the freshman level where they do things like golf balls and flight and things like that. It's useful stuff to know, but it's not that you know hard. Or they're written at the graduate level where everything is about um, linking everything together and, and doing things in parallel computation and using big parallel networks of computers and everything. There isn't really that many in-between books. And Kunin's is a real good in-between books, and it has like long projects and useful. You learn both physics, you learn a little programming, you learn a lot of numerical analysis here. So definitely one of the worst books, as you can see. He does all the math in the book, and, he, and he'll write some code here. It's in pseudo. Sometimes it's pseudo code, sometimes it's actual Fortran, but you can figure out the code very easily. Um, so I highly recommend this book. Now, another book on computational physics, this is not as good as Kunin's book, but it's written in, um, it's geared toward Python. The programs are shorter, but he teaches like the necessary Python, and he has a lot of good things in here. And he has a website where he has a lot of, okay. Let's see if I can get back there. Um, he has a website where you can download sample chapters and um, take a look. Basically, most of the programs in this book are short. You know, they're like 50-line programs at most, 20-line programs. But he starts out, you know, with py Python programming for physicists, and then he'll do things with, you know, usual numerical analysis, accuracy and speed. And he'll uh, go through everything. But he's got like a few chapters at the end where he does like differential equations through all these fancy methods, which you don't see in many books. And, and it's just very interesting, just the algorithms and everything, you know, beyond runge Kutta to solve all of these differential equations and partial differential equations. In terms of Python itself, I highly recommend this book, Learning Scientific Programming with Python. Um, Again, one of the problems with most Python books is the examples they have are like business examples, you know, shopping at a supermarket or, you know, some website, ordering things, sorting things and everything. This is a book that's, you know, at least most of the examples you'll learn some things on scientific things. It's very good on the Python language and it covers the NumPy and the Matplotlib library uh, packages, the core Python languages. But the examples that he has, as well as SciPy and Pandas, the examples that he have and the problems throughout the book, and again, he has an online website where every um, thing is solved, every example, or just about every example in the book is solved. And, um, and uh, so you'll learn a little bit. You'll, you'll do some interesting programming instead of some boring program while you learn Python. Um, if you're a theoretical physicist, you'll, you'll be using some sort of a computer algebra system. I've, um, at various points in the past, I've written some things comparing, you know, Maple and Mathematica and MATLAB and Sage and SymPy and so on and so forth. Maple is my favorite system, but, you know, I'm not saying that it's the one you should use. It's one of the easier ones to learn and everything, but there aren't really that many good books on computer algebra systems. Most of them are just like manual type books where they just show you a command and blah, blah, blah. This is the best book for learning how computer algebra systems work and how to get them to do what you want them to do. And unfortunately, it was published in 2003, so you think it would be totally obsolete, but it's not. It, it, all those un commands that you don't know about that aren't shown in the manuals are still valid and still in Maple. And he, um, he covers everything. At first, it looks like a manual, a typical manual, but the examples he covers are just amazing. And um, he does all the things on factoring polynomials, and, and he covers everything, you know, on the math and everything, you know, polynomials and rational functions and how they're represented, internal data representation, how to manipulate all these things and get 
them into the answer, you know, with assume how you can get it to do what you want it to do and simplification. Um, he's got excellent packages on the linear algebra thing as well as Grobner bases. So I haven't seen any other book like this. I wish somebody would like update this or come out with a second edition. But it's still extremely useful. And whenever I have a problem in Maple, I go here first. And it's got a tremendous index. Everything is like in the index, so you can find things really fast. And um, they have like examples in here on actual like published papers by mathematicians and physicists where they've used Maple to do some hard calculations. And he, he goes through them. You won't see stuff like this anywhere else. Um, now, this book I recommend, Siam 100-Digit Challenge. This was an amazing book in that, that it's like 10 problems where they ask you to solve something and, and you get to see the solution. I can't look in the book. But you get to see the solution and you, um, you see if you can actually solve these problems. And, and a lot of these things are incredibly hard to solve. And sometimes they use Maple, and sometimes they use Mathematica, and sometimes they use um, C++, and so on. And I highly recommend this book if you want to, if you have any interest in high accuracy numerical computing. Um, now, as a physicist or a mathematician, you'll publish papers, and you'll end up using LaTeX. When I first saw LaTeX, I was skeptical. I said to myself. I like point and click interfaces. I don't like these like linear single line programs. I don't like HTML and that kind of stuff. But then I learned Maple and it really is fantastic. And it and it sort of turns you from a student to a professional because now you can write all these professional looking papers, you know, through Matex, Latex that you could never write before. I'll um let me see if I can give you an example of one of my papers. This is my website on theoretical physics, by the way. Um, I think it's under quantum mechanics. Um, okay, so I wrote this book, this paper for 8.06x on the hydrogen atom and everything. And, you know, like I said, it looks professional. It may not be a professional paper, and it's not, although it was considered a very good paper. And I haven't published it, but it was in the class. The class published um, all the um, papers and everything. But this is what you can do effortlessly with, um, with latex. It's just so easy to do ev anything you want. So um, I highly recommend becoming proficient in latex. And there is a... Um, There are many, many books. Now I have to get back the book. There are many, many books on latex. Oops. Oh, well. Here it is. Um, but I and there's many free tutorials online, so you don't need to find a book. And anytime you want to get a command in latex, all you do is you Google and you say like, latex. How do I make parentheses bigger? Or latex. How do I use this mathematical symbol for intersection and set theory and it, and the answers come up instantly but this book is a um, a really good reference work it's got a, a really good index so you can find things fast and um, he covers he goes through a tutorial at the start a short course and um, he's on the fifth edition now I think I own the fourth edition but he goes through a short course and then he goes through um, you know, all the rest of the stuff, and uh, it's 500 pages, and, you know, it's the type of thing that, you know, you read like 10 pages a day and everything on how to typeset and do all, all the commands and everything, but it, it's really worthwhile as a book. Like I said, you can find 20-page tutorials online that can get you started, but um, at some point in time, you'll have to Either use Google as a reference or use this book as a reference or, or another book like it. I think this is one of the best books on latex. Um, finally, this I left this book out. You know, physics is an experimental science. And um, I've hardly done an experiment in my life in physics. And um, 
sadly. I wish I had, but I haven't. And um, this book is the only book I own on experiments, but it covers like all of the um, experiments in modern physics and it like gives details and you know you, even if you're a theorist you can gain a lot from reading about it uh, covers all areas and um, so I think uh, everybody should have at least one book on experimental physics um, I highly recommend and I'm gonna try and bring it up right now there's a course this might be difficult for me to bring up. Um, there's a course at MIT. Let's see if I can find it. I have to set some things. Okay. Um, I just let, let me scroll through here. There's a course, a junior level course. I want the undergraduate courses. It's got it's got some filters. I need to take off those filters. Okay, course number. Uh, why am I not getting the undergraduate courses? I want physics. Let me do undergraduate courses. This. Sorry about this. I should have prepared this ahead of time. Um, I'm just not going to get it. I don't know why. I have physics. It's all I want is physics, and it's giving me all these other things. Um, relevance. Okay. Um, quantum physics. They recently redid this website, and I wish they had. This is one of the things that, one of my pet peeves in um, computer science, people are always upgrading things and everything. And um, it was fine the way it was, and now they've made it, like, a lot harder. Um, and all I want is the... Physics 8 courses, and, and they're giving me all these other courses. Um, let me try it again. Physics Junior Lab is what I want. Okay, here it is. Good. Okay, so this is, um, this is a really interesting course. Um... No, I don't know. How do I get? All right. I guess it won't show it to me. Anyway, it's um, it has a bunch of experiments and it gives the details on. Um, it's an old course and it gives all the details on like entanglement, whatever the experiment is. You know, it's like what equipment you use, um, how to use it, how to take measurements, what the theory is, and everything. So, um, I, uh, I highly recommend um, taking a look at this course on MIT OCW. Okay, that will do it for today. I have one more promise video on um, popular technology books, and then that will finish this series. Thank you very much for watching.